Hello and welcome to the Griffin News. I'm Kyrie Moses. And I'm Jordy Clark. Halloween is just a few days away. The Griffin News team is continuing to celebrate the holiday through another Halloween themed episode. An Oregon boy showed off one of the best Halloween costumes you will see this holiday. Eight-year-old Daniel Shaughnessy, who is battling brain and spinal cancer, is dressing up as Darth Vader. Daniel lost his ability to walk and is in a wheelchair. The nonprofit organization Magic Wheelchair teamed up with Daniel's family to give his wheels an upgrade. Daniel's smile told the rest of the story. With Halloween right around the corner, a very special Halloween Friday After Dark will take place in St. Joe's Room 349 this Friday night. It's called Halloween Fest, and this week, students can come out for candy, pumpkin decorating, movies, and much more. Friday After Dark is hosted every Friday night beginning at 9 p.m. and is open to all students. Looking for something to do Halloween night? Why not spend it with the Anime Club right here at Chestnut Hill College? On Halloween night, the Anime Club will present a very special Halloween spectacular where they will present their own approach to the Frankenstein story. The spooky evening will begin at 7 p.m. in Fitzsimmons Hall. Get ready for a Mexican celebration. Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead, is a day where Chestnut Hill College will honor citizens who have passed through a special celebration featuring food and remembrance. Students will also be informed about the history of the holiday. The event takes place in Fournier Hall, room 10 on November 1st, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And new this afternoon, fighting world hunger. Chestnut Hill College is helping the fight against world hunger every Thursday from 9 p.m. to midnight where you can purchase a grilled cheese sandwich in Fitzsimmons Hall Perk. It's called Feel Good, and their mission is to end extreme poverty by 2030 through mobilizing the rising generation as global citizens and strategic change makers. According to the Associated Press GFK poll released Wednesday, Hillary Clinton is in fact leading Donald Trump in the national polls. Hillary is coming in at a 45% lead, while Trump is trailing at just 39%. A reporter for the Associated Press also reported that Clinton currently has a significant lead for the race for the White House with less than two weeks to go. Tens of thousands of people are set to march in Washington, D.C. Sunday. Several coalitions are leading the Behind the Braids boycott against Wendy's. The group says the fast food chain is ignoring worker participation and human rights standards. People are meeting in front of the White House where they will begin a two-mile march. They will end at, Win at a Wendy's location. For more news around the world, we send it over to Griffin News correspondent Kira Eaton with some news that you might have missed. A French-Canadian flight attendant was initially blamed for the AIDS epidemic that devastated the nation in the 1980s. Before his death in 1989, it was thought that he spread the disease to hundreds of unknowing men. Dubbed Patient Zero, he is blamed for bringing the illness to the U.S. from Haiti. Research and further study of DNA and blood samples show that HIV was present in the United States long before Patient Zero. It's now understood that the, that the disease began its North American spread in 1967, spreading to San Francisco in 1971, nearly a decade before patient zero was diagnosed. In other health news, a possible solution to the dangers of Zika is being explored. A bacteria is used to infect mosquitoes and eventually spread to others of the species. The infection would stop the spread of the virus from mosquito to human. It could effectively lessen the occurrence of the illness and make pregnancy safer for women in South American nations. Two large areas of Brazil and Colombia will see mosquitoes infected with the bacteria. While the infection is not an absolute answer to the epidemic, it's a piece of hope for those in danger of the Zika virus. The fall is known for its treats and food traditions. Between Halloween, Thanksgiving, and pumpkin spice everything, foodies around the nation have something new to look forward to. Taco Bell is running its fifth Stila based Stila Taco promotion. The Mexican food chain promised consumers a free Doritos Locos taco if a base was stolen during the World Series. Without hesitation, in the first inning of the first game of the series, Francisco Lindor stole a base. Taco Bell has named Lindor the new taco hero. Head over to Taco Bell on November 2nd to redeem your free taco, thanks to Cleveland's bold shortstop. Stay safe this Halloween weekend and have a super spooky time. Be sure to tune in next time for all the news you didn't catch trick-or-treating. In case you missed it, now you know. I'm Kira Eaton. We will be right back with weather after this short break. With the hollow weekend on its way, let's see how warm our costumes should be. Tonight, all you witches better carry umbrellas so, the, so you don't melt in the rain. The low will be 44 degrees and the chance of rain is at 90%, so be prepared for that. All you vampires better be ready for Friday because the sun will be shining with only a little shade from the clouds with a high of 53 degrees and a low of 38. 
Saturday will also be mostly sunny with a rise in temperature to a high of 66 and a low of 55. Sunday is going to be mostly cloudy with a high, with a haunting high of 72 degrees on this late October date and a low of 42. On Monday, Halloween day, you're going to be seeing a scary sunny day with a high of 58 and a low of 40. So all of you trick-or-treaters dress wickedly warm. That's all for the weather. I'm your meteorologist and floating head, Taylor Starner, and have a spooky Halloween weekend. Next on the Griffin News, we send it over to sports anchor Christian Hernandez with the latest on sports. Christian? All CHC teams are out of action this week, so let's dive into professional sports. After a Game 1 win, the Indians look to gain more ground on the Cubs at Progressive Field in Game 2 last night. The scoring started early. Anthony Rizzo doubles home Chris Bryant in the first off starter Trevor Bauer. Two innings later, a two-out frozen rope into center field by Kyle Schwarber plates Rizzo. 2 nothing Cubs. Fifth inning, Ben Zobris laces one into the right field corner for RBI triple. Cubbies tack on. Schwarber's not done. Another single up the middle adds to Chi-Town's lead. Jake Arrieta was on point. Five and two-thirds innings, giving up only two hits and striking out six. Chapman would save the game in the ninth as Chicago wins 5-1 and tie the series at one. In his second game back from a torn ACL in April, Schwarber goes 2-4 for four with those two huge RBIs. Indians suffer their first home loss since September 25th and their first of the postseason. Game 3 is scheduled for an 8 p.m. first pitch in Chicago on Friday night. The Philadelphia Flyers hosted Eastern Conference foe the Buffalo Sabres Tuesday night at the Wells Fargo Center. And boy, we have a ton of goals from this contest. Three minutes in the second, Zemgis Jurgensen puts a shot on net, and Tyler Ennis with a goal and a deflection, saves up 1-0. A minute later, Sabres on the power play. Face-off win, and Matt Molson nets one with a backhand through the five-hole. Another Buffalo power play. Molson again, this time from the slot. Three straight goals given up by Michael Nerverth. Steve Mason would substitute in the pipes. The Flyers went to work in the third. Slap shot near the blue line. Tyler Connecting deflects the slap shot for a power play goal. Back on the power play, Claude Giroux with a beautiful setup pass, and Braden Shen shoots and scores. Can they complete this comeback? Yet another man advantage. A shot on net becomes an all-out scrum. Bodies flying everywhere. Mark Street gets a solid shot on nets the equalizer. Fly scored two goals in under two minutes. Shootout commences after a scoreless overtime. Jakob Borchek for the Pennsylvania game winner. Quick deke to the right, gets the goalie to bite, and he scores top shelf. Fly guys win 4-3. Flies were 3 or 4 on the power play and outshoot the Sabres 41-25. Braden Shen gets my first star with two points, including the assist on the game-tying goal. It's time to trust the process. The Sixers open up the 2016-2017 NBA season against the Oklahoma City Thunder in South Philly. Joel Embiid lived up to his anticipated debut. Turnaround jumper from the charity stripe, money. TJ McConnell to Embiid off the pick and pop. Booyah! Give me all three of these. Great D here. He rises and blocks Russell Westbrook on the drive. Drama started in the fourth. Westbrook step back jumper in the corner, tickles the twine. Thunder take the lead. At the other end, feed the big man the ball, hand in his mitt, and Beach jumper from the block ties the game. Clock running down, Sixers down by two. Gerald Henderson fights through some contact, but Andrew Robeson swats it away. Thunder transition, and Cantor cleans up the mess. After a pair of free throws, the Sixers lose his exciting home opener, 103 to 97. And Beach finished with 20 points and seven rebounds in the loss. Westbrook nearly messed around and got a triple-double. 32 points, 12 rebounds, and 9 assists. Sixers host new acquisition Dwight Howard and the Atlanta Hawks Saturday afternoon at 12.30. For the Griffin News, I'm Clayton Allen. I mean, I'm Christian Hernandez. Back to Kyrie Jordy. Give me back the hat, man. Back to Kyrie and Jordy at the desk. Thanks, Christian. We leave you with a qu one quick reminder. The IT department issued an email stating the school's Wi-Fi network is receiving an upgrade. The network will be down tomorrow from 9 to 11 a.m. For more information on this and other school news, check us out on social media. Follow at THC underscore TV on Instagram and Twitter, and like us on Facebook at CHC Television. For Jordy Clark and the rest of us at the Griffin News, I'm Kyrie Moses. We'll see you next time.